What's up YouTube? Welcome back, my name's Tony. So if you've watched some of my previous videos, like my how to record electric guitars video, you've seen me give a brief overview of reamping. Basically recording a DI of a signal, running it out to a reamp box, and back in through your system. That would have been briefly explained in those videos, but the little secret about that is, I lied. I wasn't using a dedicated reamp box for that, I was using a DI box backwards. So the way I've done that is by taking a female XLR to TRS cable, running that out from my Motu interface and into the output of the DI box. From there you take the input of the DI box and plug that into your guitar amp and it essentially works. That's the method that I've used for this for a lot of years. But after talking to my friend Derek from Chunkasaurus, he told me that using a dedicated reamp box will make a world of difference to your sound. So I was planning on making a video about reamping anyways, so now let's double that up with a video about reamping and a comparison of using a reamp box and a DI box. So for starters, I'm just gonna record a guitar part. I'm running my Les Paul here into a DI box before my pedal board. From the DI box, it goes into my pedal board, out from the pedal board, into my Orange Rocker 30. In front of my Orange Rocker 30, I'm picking that up with an SM57, which is running into my Warm Audio 1073. So I've tracked some guitar directly into Reaper. I took a DI from before my pedal board, as well as the microphone signal from the cabinet. Next, I think we'll start with the way that I've always done this, by using a DI box backwards. So the way I've got this set up is going from the quarter inch line output of my Motu 828X interface. I've got a TRS to female XLR cable between there and the DI box. From there, I've got an instrument cable that runs from the jack labeled input out to my pedal board, from my pedal board into my Orange Rocker 30, and from that point on nothing has changed from when I originally recorded the guitar part. Now this is very important when reamping using a DI box backwards. Because the DI box is not explicitly meant to be used in this fashion, you need to be very careful of the amount of signal you're sending to the DI box and therefore to your amp. In this particular case I'm sending out from Reaper at negative 15 decibels. That brought the amp signal back up to where it was when I was playing direct into it. Now you need to be very careful about doing it this way because it is possible to blow up your amp. So uh, sorry Curtin Ray. Anyways, here's the sound of that guitar line reamped through my DI box. So now we're going to switch that over to the dedicated reamp box. We're using a radio reamp box for this, the JCR. So we're running from the balance line outs of my Motu 828 interface. We've got a TRS to male XLR cable running from there to the reamp box. And after that, again, everything is exactly the same. So because this reamp box is actually built for this purpose, not only does it have a volume output on the box itself, but I'm also sending from Reaper at zero decibels. Whereas with the DI box, I had to send at negative 15 to avoid blowing up my amp.
So as I like doing in these videos, I'm going to put up a few different comparisons. These comparisons are going to A-B between the reamp signal from the DI box, the reamp signal from the reamp box, and the direct signal from when I originally recorded the guitar part. So I would very much like to hear what you guys think about those comparisons. Leave a whole bunch of comments down below and let me know what you think. Personally, I found that all three of them sounded just a little bit different. The DI box seemed to have a little bit of a slurrier sound through the mid-range. It sounded a little bit less defined to me. Whereas the reamp box sounded nice and tight but seemed to have just a little bit less low end on there. For those of you familiar with this box, it does have a high and low pass filter option on it. I was not using either of those, I had it set flat. It still had a little bit of a lifted high end and a little bit of a dampened low end compared to the direct signal. Using the DI box as a reamp box also seemed to lift the noise floor up quite a bit. It seemed like a lot of the background noise and a lot of that stuff that you don't usually hear right up front was considerably more up front than with the reamp box or with the direct signal. Is it up front enough to be a problem? Well, I've been using that method for years and produced some great commercial results, so I guess not, but it is something to consider when deciding to go with this option. All in all, I do think in the near future I'm going to be looking into buying a reamp box. But if you need to do some reamping and you don't have the budget for one, a DI box will give you satisfactory results. Anyways guys, I hope this video has been helpful for you. If you've enjoyed this one and would like to see more videos like this, please hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so that you can get notified when I post new content, and stay tuned for some new videos coming up every Sunday. A big thank you to Derek Matten from Chunkasaurus for lending me the reamp box. If you guys haven't heard about Chunkasaurus, check them out. They are a killer metal band. And if you're on Vancouver Island, make sure to go out and see them next time they're around. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time.